Welcome back to the Mr. Big Facts Podcast. Now today I'm going to say something, and I'm going to cut it short. I'm going to make it real brief, okay? Now, amongst us, you know, black people, we have what they call agent provocateurs. Now, what an agent provocateur is, is, is somebody that's being paid to cause trouble. It's a troublemaker, you know? And I see y'all brother Tariq Nasheed as an agent provocateur. But you got to think about it. What man grown, you know, grown man sits on a computer all day, all week, whatever, and just, you know, begs for money, begs for donations, disrespects black people. Like, it's supposed to be a violation. See, y'all, listen, I listen to a guy called Claude Anderson. I like Claude Anderson. Smart guy, you know. He's on code. He speaks about being on code. And let me tell you something. I don't understand the beef between the so-called FBA and the Africans. Now, I'm not African. We may seriously have a problem there. But when you start to lump in people from the Caribbean in your black American versus African beef, now we have a problem because that's where my lineage is from. You feel me? Now, I'm not African. I don't know how Africans operate. I know they probably do have some bias, even against me. But still, we got to stay on code. Now, the so-called FBA and the ADOs people, you know, they're ramping up their claims for reparations. Now, I don't believe the United States government's going to give any type of reparations to blacks. Although it is needed and it should be paid, I don't trust them. I don't believe that they're going to give it. But in the process, you have guys like Tariq Nasheed, okay, that made over a million dollars in donations, right? Millions. And then the other day, he's on his live and he's talking about, yeah, you can chase your lineage. You just have to do this and do that and you can find that. No, 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 buddy. You've made a million dollars. What did you do with it? You've lied and said that you were going to build a museum. And when you're being questioned about it by your own FBA family members, you're calling them names. You're roasting them. You're disrespecting them. Let me tell you something, Tariq. You're less than a man. You're a scumbag. You're a scumbag. You're worse than guys like Benjamin Crunk. You're worse than guys like Al Sharpton. You guys are wicked and evil. And you figured out. You figured out your place. You went from being a Mac Daddy. You went from writing all these books on how to be a player. You went from disrespecting black women with Tommy Sotomayor. Piece of garbage. He's a piece of garbage. Now listen, let me tell you something. I like the manosphere. I like the black manosphere. I follow it. I loved Kevin Samuels. But Tommy Sotomayor is a piece of shit. And you was buddies with him. Disrespecting black women. Your own women. You forgot? You found out that that lane wasn't your lane. And you found out that the pulpit pimp... The snake oil salesman, the wolf in sheep's clothing, the agent provocateur, that was your lane. And you took that lane and you made over a million dollars off of the heads of your own people. You have no shame. And the only thing that you're doing is feeding on the fears of the so-called FBA American. 
Now, what you successfully did was turn the needle. You successfully made the so-called FBA American believe that their biggest threat is another black person, is an immigrant, is a foreigner. That's what you made them believe. It's easy for black people to target each other. We've been doing it for decades. We're doing it right now, shit. We're killing each other in every city. Gangs. Murder. Drugs. Prison. We've done it all. And we're still doing it. And thanks to guys like you, that trend is continuing. Now, nobody can question this man about the million dollars and change that he made. Remember? I peep game, guys. I peep game. Even O'Shea Duke Jackson was starting to get on the side of questioning Tariq Nasheed. And when Tariq Nasheed went after O'Shea and said, you better watch your mouth because I will expose you. Have you guys realized that O'Shea has changed his tone? Have you realized that O'Shea has now turned on Umar Johnson? And he's no better than Tariq Nasheed, another snake oil salesman. Except he includes everybody, every black. He's a Pan-Africanist. But O'Shea Duke Jackson was threatened by Tariq and he shut his mouth. Now, Tariq Nasheed is a bully. He's a bully. He's raised a million dollars and he cannot form a proper think tank group that is going to get black Americans to find their lineage so they can be serious about getting their reparations from the United States government. He could have used that money to form a group, to form some type of a a service where people of African descent that were slaves in America and their family were slaves so they can, he can, he can help them trace their lineage. Just by saying you can trace your lineage is very easy. It doesn't mean that everyone has the know-how and the means to do it. Remember, guys, the immigrant community in America, the black immigrant community is very, very minute, very small. They have no power to affect black Americans. The black American group in America is powerful. Over at least 35 to 40 million strong. The immigrants are just doing them. They're doing them. They're in their corner because they're afraid that if they make the wrong move, yeah, they get a one-way ticket back to Bumblefuck. You hear me? So don't be mad at the immigrants if they see you and they act bougie. See, they don't, they, they're visitors. They can be dipped right out the country and never get a chance to come back to the land of milk and honey again. This is why they disassociate themselves. And they do not want to associate with the so-called black ghetto mentality some of them fall through the cracks but if you come up from these countries with a strong background and a strong family you won't fall victim now Tariq Nasheed went as far on his live to say that FBA Americans do not commit crimes against each other literally that's what he said he was referring to one situation where a Trinidadian man, I believe, had killed a girl in Atlanta, you know, student from college. I don't know what happened. I'm just repeating what he said. And he used that as an example to say, we don't commit those kinds of crimes. We don't do this. We don't do that. Stroking your ego again, lying to you. Black on black crime in this country is rampant. We kill each other at a alarming rate stop lying to the people Tariq 
because most of the people and the minions that you're, that, are, that are listening to you, they don't know any better. I won't disrespect them and call them names, but they don't know any better. All that money that you raised, you haven't done a thing for the so-called community that you're looking out for. The community that you're claiming that you care about, you haven't done anything for anybody. All you're doing is lining your pockets, taking care of your family, having more babies, and just lining up your family to be very wealthy. Let me tell y'all something. In this country and in this world, it's all man and all woman for him and herself. Stop depending on these snake oil salesmen thinking that they're going to bring you retribution and they're, they're working to help you. Let me tell you something. You guys are going to be mad. But let me tell you the truth. The closest person and the closest thing that you as FBAs were going to get to reparations was with Donald Trump. Yeah. Let that soak in. The only person, the loose cannon that would have gave y'all reparations was Donald Trump. And when he came up with that platinum plan, you remember that? Over $40 billion going to be invested in black communities. Ice Cube was working with him. And what did they do? They sent the Vivica Fox. They sent all the paid black people the agent provocateurs to undermine him. You guys got to wake up. A lot of guys, even Kevin Samuels, were talking about this. Donald Trump, the loose cannon, was a man that would have probably said, hey, you know what? Let's just pay these people off. But no, they made you think that he was a racist. He's a racist. Oh, be afraid because we're all afraid about racists. Racists can't do you a damn thing. Racism is an illusion. Dr. Claude Anderson told you race, racism is about economic power. Racism is about who can win the race to be the most powerful, who can have the most money, land, power, influence, and all the above. That's racism. It's not about what somebody thinks about you because of how you look or the color of your skin. We're so insecure about that that we, we, we let that be our downfall because we're insecure about our own complexion. We have a lot of insecurities due to slavery, Jim Crow, segregation, redlining. We have it, we have it in us. And this is what destroys us because we hate ourselves. That's why we kill us. It kill each other. That's why it's so easy for a black person to shoot another black person. There's no cold. We don't have a cold. And we everything we, we want to do, we put it on front street. We advertise it for the world. Don't you think they're going to fall the plot? Don't you think they're going to come and dismantle it in, in some type of sneaky way? We talk too much. And now we want to blame the black immigrants. This is asinine to think about so we've forgotten who really got power in this country and this world we've forgotten we took in our eyes off the prize we've took it we've been fooled again we've been bamboozled again by these snake all our salesmen these crooks the million dollar mac daddy to rick nasheed over a million dollars no museum Right? But he's driving nice cars and he's living in a white community. I told y'all already, look at Black Lives Matter. They burnt your cities down. They made you guys go to prison. They made the government now look at you as terrorists. They made the American uh, people look at you as terrorists. You burn cities, you jumped on police cars, you, you torched cop cars, you even scared the police, right? All for what? What did we accomplish from it? Cory Booker and Kamala Harris couldn't even pass a bill with all the fake tears. They couldn't pass a bill, but they did pass one for the Asians. You got to remember these things, man. You guys, you got your eyes off the prize. 
And now, because of your insecurities, you believe that your biggest problem in America is an African or somebody from the Caribbean. Y'all got to cut it out. At the end of the day, the Caribbean is right there. It's open for y'all to go visit Haiti, a country black Americans could invest in. Nah, you got the Bill Clintons and the Hillarys going down there and raping and pillaging and kidnapping the girls and taking them to the island. All the above. It's a lot of stuff. They're trying to get our eyes off the prize. They don't want us to be, like Khaled said, they don't want you to be awoke. They don't want you to wake up and see what's going on. They want you to keep hating on each other. They want you to hate everything that looks like you. That's why you got people like Tariq being paid. To say that the immigrants is your problem. The tethers. Disrespectful for calling your, 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 your black brother and sister a tether. The black American so-called FBA should be held to a moral standpoint that's higher than every other black in the world. Because of the fact that you guys came from the greatest nation on earth. You should not be easily fooled. Words are wind as they say. The Africans could say what they got to say. You shouldn't get offended by that. People are going to say things. Don't get your eyes off of the prize. He's made a million dollars. Now he's funding all his documentaries, all his programs. There's no museums. And he's going to become a billionaire under your nose. And then you can't even tell him good morning. <laughs>